With Just Like Heaven, The Cure had absorbed the pop of the mid-80s and combined it with their own indie style and spat out one of the greatest pop songs ever. The Cure are the undisputed kings of the unconventional pop song. And today, we're gonna to talk about their hit, Just Like Heaven. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvelously well. Welcome back to another episode of Songs That Changed Music. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. And of course, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and you'll get a whole bunch of free goodies. Today, we're talking about The Cure and their hit song, Just Like Heaven. If you only know one song by The Cure, it's probably this song. This song seamlessly blends The Cure's edgy indie sound with the super pop sound of the mid 80s. The song was a huge hit in the UK for The Cure and was their first song to break into the US top 40. And it went on to influence so many other great songs. More than anyone else, Robert Smith has the uncanny ability to blend seemingly opposite ideas and sounds. Nowhere is that more evident than in their 1987 song, Just Like Heaven. When The Cure first started, they were a very indie sounding, and some might say dark and edgy band. Robert Smith had already proven that he could write a pop song. In 83, he wrote Love Cats. Some considered it to be a disposable pop song, which was rumored to have been written because Smith had a huge tax bill to pay. Smith himself even said that Love Cats is far from being my favorite song. He said he composed it drunk, filmed the video drunk, promoted it drunk, and it was a joke. Before that, in 1982, he'd written Let's Go To Bed. It's a super hooky song, which is built around a really hooky keyboard line that is mirrored in a vocal with just doo-doo-doos. And then in 1985's Close To Me, it was a perfect example of a song that's both happy and sad at the same time. It's a juxtaposition between a super hooky pop track with a very emotional, almost crying lead vocal. He had laid the groundwork showing that he could write great pop songs, but nothing about The Cure songs are ever conventional or predictable. Things started to shift in the mid 80s with pop music. These were the days of Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, George Michael, and so many other pop giants. As with Close To Me, Robert Smith had already been blending seemingly opposite ideas. Just watch them live. Robert Smith, with seemingly little effort or movement, is always one of the most charismatic live performances you'll ever see. The Cure had had lots of success in the rest of the world, but hadn't yet had a hit in America. In the time leading up to the 1987 album, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Robert Smith had forced himself to write music for 15 days out of every month in order to develop material. Smith himself said, otherwise I'd have just got up in the mid afternoon and watched TV until the pubs opened. Then I would have gone out drinking. I knew as soon as I'd written it, it was a good pop song. When the song was completed, he reportedly told his bandmates, I'll never write something this good again. So with his new material mostly worked out, Robert Smith and The Cure headed to the studio Merival in southern France to record the album Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, which included the song called Shivers that would later become Just Like Heaven. The band's girlfriends were at these sessions, which also influenced the music, according to Smith. The girls would sit on the sofa in the back of the control room and give the songs marks out of 10. So there was a really big female input. With Just Like Heaven, Robert Smith was able to absorb everything around him and create something really unique. It was a blend of their previous indie sound mixed with the pop sounds of the mid 80s. During the recording session, drummer Boris Williams increased the tempo a bit, adding a drum fill at the beginning. This inspired Smith to introduce each instrument one at a time during the opening 49 seconds, which is unusually long for a pop song. Even Billie Jean's intro isn't that long. It starts with drums and bass, then adds a low guitar riff and thirds, then rhythmic acoustic, then keyboards, then the iconic descending electric guitar line. At 
at this point, the song feels so good, it could just keep going this way forever with no vocal. As a matter of fact, before the song was finished, the French TV show Les Enfants du Rock asked The Cure to provide a theme song. So Robert Smith offered an instrumental version of Just Like Heaven, stating that it meant the music would be more familiar to millions of Europeans even before it was released. But instead of going on forever as an instrumental, the song adds the only thing that could make it better, an incredible vocal performance from Robert Smith. Show me, show me, show me how you do that trick. The one that makes me scream, she said. The one that makes me laugh, she said. And threw her arms around my neck. The long intro isn't the only unusual thing about the form of this song. In a conventional pop song, your form tends to go like this. Short intro, verse, maybe a pre-chorus into a chorus. Do another verse, another chorus, maybe a bridge, and then of course back to a chorus and out. But Robert Smith is anything but conventional. Let's compare the standard pop song form to Just Like Heaven's form. We've got a long intro, a verse, an instrumental with that great guitar riff, then another verse, then into another section that can't quite be called a chorus, so we'll call it a refrain. And after that, it's another instrumental, this time with a piano solo. Another verse, again, another shorter refrain, and then the song ends, wrapping it up in a radio-friendly three minutes 32 seconds. It's not just the form that's different in this song. Most pop songs, for instance, are built around four primary chords. The one, the four, the five, and the minor six. But just like heaven is built on the one, the five, the minor second, and the four. Introducing the minor six and the major flat seven on the refrain. It's all very unusual for a pop song, but there's something undeniably hooky about it all. There's also not a lot of dynamic contrast. The drums are playing the same high energy beat the entire song. Instead, they bring the instruments in and then take them out to build the song up and down. This is another technique found in Billie Jean, one of the biggest hits of the decade. The subtlety in Robert Smith's guitar playing is fantastic. In the intro, he plays this root third on the A, and then he plays a third in the bass and a fifth above it for the E. And then on the B minor, it's the root and the third, so B and a D. And then on the D, it's a root and a third, which is the, B, the D and the F sharp. But what I love is when the band comes in and he's just playing those chords again, he adds two different variations. On the D, he adds this major seventh, which gives a great transition, it's very pure. Awesome, very dark. And then the next time he'll do it, or randomly it seems, he plays this when the D lands. So it's, it's even poppier. And you can hear on the tracks there's actually a punch in, but it's really super pretty. So you go between this happy major chord to this sort of dark major seventh where it's very cure. Then of course there's the deceptively simple but beautiful riff. One of the most iconic riffs, just an incredibly cool guitar riff. And we were listening around, at the moment I'm using this like Eastern European made flanger pedal called a Volz from the 80s. Um, I do have a Boss Chorus Ensemble, one of the original ones, but this sounds like to me it was either the Roland JC120, which had the best chorus, or it could have been a Boss CE2 chorus pedal, which was very popular and amazing sounding. And of course you have amp reverb and Guitar wise, it could be a hollow body. It's hard to tell. I'm using this Baxendale guitar, which has a Charlie Christian pickup on it, which you normally associate with a hollow body. So this was my closest approximation. With Just Like Heaven, The Cure had absorbed the pop of the mid eighties and combined it with their own indie style and spat out one of the greatest pop songs ever. The song and album was produced by Robert Smith and David M. Allen, mixed by the legendary Bob Clear Mountain, which certainly contributed to the song's success. If you're looking to make a hit, have Bob mix it. Just Like Heaven was The Cure's 11th top 40 hit in the UK, but their first in the US. 
While there are other songs by The Cure that charted higher, this was their first song to break into the top 40 in the US. And to this day, if someone knows just one song by The Cure, it's probably just like heaven. The week that it peaked at number 40 in the US, the top five songs were So Emotional by Whitney Houston, Got My Mind Set On You by George Harrison, Faith by George Michael, Is This Love by Whitesnake, and The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson. The Cure were in good company, even though their song didn't fit the pop mold of the day. In my own production, I reference The Cure all the time. Many bands come to me and say they don't want to sell out and be pop, so they end up writing songs that aren't that hooky. But is there a more credible artist alive than Robert Smith? He's got more indie cred than anyone, and Just Like Heaven grabs you. Robert Smith has been able to write huge pop songs and still remain the most credible indie artist alive. He continues to be charmingly irreverent, create incredible music, and in 2019, The Cure were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Thank you. I'd rather use our allocated time to play some music. So we'll play a handful of songs for you. Thank you very much. The song has influenced so many songs that came after it. It is a unique blend that is a distillation of the cure themselves. It is simultaneously indie and cool and credible, but they can still sell out a stadium. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please check out the other videos in this series. There'll be a link below. If there's any songs you'd like to know about, anything you think really shaped music, something as important as this, please leave it below. Have a marvelous time and we'll see you all again very soon.